Happy Hip Podcast is brought to you by these cool dudes. Hi, this is Jim. You've heard me in the Red Beard Podcast. Well, it's the Red Beard Podcast, and these are your hosts. Hey, what's going on? I'm Tony. <laughs> what's up, man? And I'm Cooley. And also Ren's here again. Hello. Ren's here again. What's going Woo! on? I've been Not drinking. <laughs> we all We've have. all been drinking. <laughs> so, Ren, how are you feeling? I'm feeling I. I have burgers in me, so it's a good day. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're past your tortilla chip strep throat phase. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for bringing that up. I'm so glad <laughs> that you brought up my misery. Thank you, Tony. We had a, we had a little uh, red beard cookout before the show. Yeah. What hurt more going down the the burger, the bun, or the corn. I expected something different. Um, <laughs> All together. <laughs> Nothing, because I am fully healed. Thank mm, you, Jim. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the last thing that hurt going down? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> what were we talking about again? <laughs> oh, God. Burgers. What's on the docket today? Yeah. Oh, we got a lot of good shit. Um, all right, well, let's just get this, uh, this shit going, man. Um, so I am not going to be one of the people to talk about this, nor is Jim, because we didn't actually watch it yet, but Ren and Cooley, you guys actually saw the first episode of Preacher. What did you guys think? Dope. It's pretty good. It's better than the first episode of the first season, I'll tell you that. Is Mm -hmm. it really, Yeah, it was a snooze fest that first episode. They were like, we're going to open up in a church in, like, Africa or something, and I was like, okay. Okay. And that dude blew up, though? That was cool. Uh, yeah. Like, I hadn't read the comics previously. It was like, oh, these comics have influenced people who really matter to me, but I'm not interested. But yeah. They're dated. Right. And then I was like, whoa, I really need to read the comics now. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the comics. Um, but what I can say is the first season, now that I've seen the first episode of the second season, I mm-hmm. feel like the first season was just the first issue of the comics. Yeah. Okay. All right. I feel yeah. like they took the first issue of the comics and they just like basically condensed made episode. No, it not out. not condensed it. They did the opposite. They they expanded it and made it something more than what it was. Right. Um, they they included so much um, and filled in all the blanks and really kind of made it such a a huge epic uh, tale. Where I think Preacher was maybe what like sixty seven issues or something like that. It was um, quite a few issues. Yeah, I, th- I think it was 67 or 68, something like that. Uh, but the the way that the, the series is going, I think they really want to take this and they want to make something that's maybe... That could withstand some years? Yeah, like they can actually like go for multiple seasons as opposed to like a three or four season series. Like they want to like really like stretch this out. Um and hopefully they do a good job of it because I mean I I really like Seth Rogen and Evan, Go- Evan Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're doing a great job. I think that they're having fun with this because they're actually fans, and it shows in the material. Um, you got to respect people that love the source material. Yeah, the Saint of Killers is oh, he's such a badass character. It's one of my favorite characters. Oh yeah, he, he's he's one of my favorite characters ever. He was absolutely my favorite character in the comics. And I was hoping that they were going to do him justice, and they, I think they are certainly doing him justice in the series. I'll agree. Don't give – I don't want to know too much stuff, but tell me this. Does he have a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a full beard. <laughs> I'm going to watch it tonight. And, and, very long, and, and very long hair. I will watch it tonight. Yeah. He's, metal, if, he's metal as fuck. Uh, Let me ask you this, though. If he didn't have a mustache, would you watch it tonight? Yeah, but, like, I'd be doing other stuff. Like, I'd be folding clothes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. But, um, but yeah, there were a lot of things that they did in this episode that were um, – it, it was just really cool, like, really cool shit to see. Um, like, he used the voice of God a lot. Um, Let me it, ask you this. this. Is Eugene still in hell? We don't know yet. They haven't mentioned Eugene yet. Ah. So so Eugene is not, so, so far, Eugene is not a part of this. 
the second episode came out the day after, and I didn't realize this, so I haven't watched it yet. So I'm I'm still like yeah, I still behind. haven't seen it. Um, so I don't know like what's going to happen in the second episode, but I know the first episode they haven't mentioned Eugene. Um, the voice of God is actually used a lot now, and good. Um, uh, what's her name there? Uh, the girlfriend Tulip. Oh, Tulip. Skarg. Skarg. <laughs> Yeah, Tulip is. Uh, said, I'm going to name her Skarg. Tulip's against him using the voice of God in this, which is kind of interesting. What did you think of that? I, don't, I agree with Tulip. I just think she's a badass character, so I'm just like, you should probably listen to Tulip. Yeah, she's pretty hefty. She's pretty so, cool. So the uh, the actress, it's interesting. Was uh, she was in an interview and I, she seemed like she was kind of not happy with the role that she has. Like I think she feels like the the show is a bit too, um, a little too extra, a little too, uh, a little too crass to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And like she, she didn't know what she was getting into, and it just seemed like she didn't respect the material. So it's interesting because she actually is probably one of the shining. Yes, like, she's a characters. shining star like, in she's, the show. She's fucking awesome in the show. Yeah. So it's interesting that she's able to put that aside and actually be amazing. At her work, so she's she's a craftsman. Like I, I really give her like one hundred percent like props for being able to pull off a character that she doesn't even believe in the the subject matter. So yeah, but that's actually a, I feel like that's a good sign of an actor, somebody that actually puts the puts themselves aside and dedicates to the character. To the that, that's what I just said. I thought you said she didn't care about. She didn't. That's what I'm saying. She doesn't right. care. She doesn't care about it, but she's putting that aside, and she's she's putting when herself you, aside. And she's all right, saying, my bad. I thought when you yeah. said she didn't care about the source material, like she, she didn't doesn't give a shit about the character. She is exactly. She doesn't, she doesn't and, give a shit uh, about it, but she's she's putting that aside, and she's actually devoting herself to making sure that it's the best works that, that she can put. Has out. this come across in interviews or something? Yeah, <clears throat> that's exactly what I'm saying. Is like there, there were a couple of interviews that I've seen, and she just seems like she's just not really into. The source material because she feel, she she read the script in like a night like she just like read it overnight and she was like okay I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do it and I think she got into it because it was a role like I mean she wasn't really doing much prior to that she had she I had been in Agents also, of Shield that was like the first time I've ever seen her I don't know if that's the first I'm work she's ever she done she also picked it because it was a strong female lead it, but but. It's more of a supporting role, I think. The, but, yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, but it's a is paycheck. A strong, yeah, strong that's what character. I think. She's not into doing it anything. For. You're yeah. doing something now, and it's on. It's on fucking AMC. I mean, like you're you're be stupid not to take that. Yeah, but she's owning Halt it. And catch fire. Yeah, and it's yeah. a yeah. Seth Rogen like Evan Goldberg just gonna tie. Say, like you just have because of the names of your attached life, you are on it. that show. Right. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I'm psyched to, to check it out because I haven't seen it yet. From what you guys are saying, it's pretty badass. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, just, yeah, like when you see the opening scene, though, like, I mean, the beginning is a little weird, but then, like, as soon as the Santa Killer shows up, it's fucking, like, balls to the wall, like, just... It's like butter. <sighs> awesome. <laughs> so, one of the things I wanted to, to mention is uh, Raka, which is a uh, a whole new um, take on sci-fi that, uh, that um, Neil Bloomkamp, who actually directed district nine uh released uh strictly to youtube right now it's actually a uh 20 minute first of a of three 20 minute um little like episodes that he's putting out starring sigourney weaver uh which is really cool and raka is actually it's it takes place in a pot in a in a apocalyptic world where a dystopian world yeah well, what do we say so aliens have kind of come down taken over the planet held humans as hostages and they're kind of using them as energy for their, you know, their growth as a civilization. And they just basically took us out in like a week, uh, probably less than that. But uh, but it's just, you know, the last surviving humans, um, Sigourney Weaver being one of them who is kind of in, in charge of a, a large group of humans who are fighting. Um, you know, they're kind of like the last remaining survivors of this war. And they're trying to just kind of, you know, pull the earth back together and get, you know, humans back on track. And it's very, it's very Ripley esque, um, you know. Of, of it, it looks like you know Ripley just got older, you know, and she's trying to kind of, you know, regain humans as a as a civilization, so uh, or as a species. So it was interesting. I thought they did a really cool job with the aliens. They look really reptilian. They also have the ability to 
Um, basically just do some sort of telepathic mind control where if you make eye contact with them, they can actually control you and actually, um, cause you to almost be paralyzed in a sense. And they can, they can do whatever they want. Um, so, you know, when they're getting into fights, you know, there's this one guy that is fighting one of them and you just hear them keep yelling, don't look at him, don't look at him. And then like, he finally looks at him and, oh, he does. and you know, he, he tries to actually, you know, she, he starts controlling him to pick up his gun and start firing at his own people and gets taken out, obviously. Um, but it's just a very unique, um, a very unique subject matter, you know, and, and how they actually film it. It's very different from anything that I've seen. The aliens are very different. Um, they're, like I said, they're reptilian looking, but also very intelligent. So, um, but it does have a very, like, any alien movie that you've ever seen, you know that they actually have a very um, specific um, environment that they thrive in. You mm-hmm. know, where it's like black, almost look like engineered, mechanical type things. Mm-hmm. It's very H.R. Geiger, you know. And I feel like um, this world looks very, very similar. It's it's black. It's coming out in different shapes and spikes. But it's also organic because it's kind of moving and throbbing. So it's um, it's really cool, and they've also had a couple of humans who have survived their experiments, and they're part human, but also have kind of like some kind of um, you know electronic hookups to them, but that, that are also organic. It's very interesting. So the aliens um, look like something straight out of a sci-fi shooting game. Yeah, like they they look like <laughs> no, they look like something looks like, like someone a Turok. Halo or Gears of War, Turok, Turok. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You know. You know, it's the it's, kids still love Turok these days. Yeah, Turok too. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, but I, I will say though, it's um, it's the only reason I didn't actually, I wasn't as excited about this when I first saw it. I actually was kind of pissed off. Was uh, I was like, oh, this is bullshit. But then I actually gave it a shot and watched it. Was because as soon as I watched it, I found out that this, the only reason Neil Bloomkamp is doing this, is because. Alien Five is no longer going to happen, so Ridley Scott was like, "That script is dead. Uh, like that's not going anywhere." So he still mm-hmm. utilized Sigourney Weaver as somebody that wanted to work with him, and is kind of putting that power and that that act her her as an actress to work. You know what I mean? And is actually making something that people may watch because her name's in it. But the well, whole Sigourney it, Weaver's going to get work. Well, no, I don't. I don't mean that. I mean, I mean he's. He's putting her to work for his advantage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what Agreed. I mean. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, because she's also um, has a part in a role in the new uh, Marvel Defenders. Exactly. So I'm yeah, looking she's forward like, to seeing that. I think that. she's like the bad guy. Yeah. So that's going to be cool. Uh, but Alien Five, according to Ridley Scott, um, you know the 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 script had never been written. It was just this idea, and uh, he didn't ever think it was going to happen. And then Ridley Scott said he thinks that he heard that uh, that project is officially dead. So that awesome fucking sucks because I was looking forward to seeing Sigourney Weaver come back and close out Ripley, but it's never going to fucking happen. So that's that. But check out Raka. It's worth it. Yeah. R-A-K-K-A. That's it. And it's on YouTube. Like I said, first of three. Mm-hmm. And then uh, for those that don't know, Tremors is coming back. Hell fucking yes. Yep. Um, Renz is stoked about this. No. I haven't. Yeah, Red Red can't <laughs> get enough. I don't think Kevin Bacon <laughs> He's and possibly my least favorite. Fred Ward. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you ever watch the original? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Did you uh, like the originals? No. Then, then you wouldn't give a shit. Then. I, I don't give a shit. Kevin no. Bacon looks like a creepy Chucky doll grown up. Like, <laughs> the, like the creepy nose is just terrifying. Yeah, but like a slim, in shape Chucky doll though. It's, yeah. With a big cock. Yeah, and that's. <laughs> No, but that's clearly present in Hollow Man. <laughs> we've, uh, we've learned over early 2000 movies that Kevin, Kevin has bacon. some bacon. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's got a ham. <laughs> wait, wait. Is Trent Williams in this or what? I don't know. I haven't actually looked at Trent into Williams it. or Treat Williams? Treat Williams. Is it oh, Tret man. or Treat? Treat. Was treat. Treat Williams. Treat. I really wish it was Tret because Treat is a stupid fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> like for the for my life cool growing dude. up, I always called him Tret because really? I was like, hmm, he was in that Deep looks like Rising, treat, but it's probably mm-hmm. not because it's full of fun. Okay, Treat Treat Williams is he fucking in this movie or in this remake? I don't think so because I think that uh, Kevin Bacon is the only one coming back. He's reprising his original role as, Which, as Valentine. Yes. 
Which, to be honest with you, when I first heard about this, I was like, oh, why are they doing that? They're going to destroy a film. And then, like, three hours later, I thought about it again. I was like, ah, I like Tremors. I really did. Like, I liked the first one. I thought it was great. The second one wasn't that bad either. Um, you know, they're just fucking 90s horror I've movies. i all of them. Yeah, but I mean... Valentine <laughs> McKee. Like, all of them are not, like, A+, plus, but I mean, like, the first movie, I really enjoyed. I really I liked mean, Tremors. They're, they're B-movies. But let's it's a, be, let's but, be real. Uh, like, let's I mean, be they're real, B-movies. but let's also be real to the fact that Tremors, although a horror movie and kind of cheesy, was fucking original. I like, mean, like, I put Tremors up with Black Scorpion as, like, you know, like, that type of movie. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and I love fucking Tremors and Black Scorpion. I love cheesy fucking B movie movies that you know just I this is a B movie that didn't have like uh some some weird like broad that had her boobs out uh <laughs> but but Black Scorpion oh God, was help. Black Scorpion was a B movie that had a broad that had her boobs out I mean whatever like like I love B movies um this is one of them and it was it was good to me so my take on this too is that I like I said I was first a little like down on about this movie being a reboot but I think it's actually not going to be a reboot. I think they're kind of throwing a little bit of a white lie like the uh chill out coolie like the director of this this last ghostbusters who said that it was going to be a reboot uh or a or a sequel but it's it was be actually a, soft a reboot. Boot. I think it's actually just going to be them taking the movie and picking up where the last one's left off, but you're gonna have Kevin Bacon come Ten back later, and yeah, and just be like, "Hey, what's going on?" Like, yeah, I I know how to deal with these things. What is that? And saying? I'm kind of <laughs> psyched about that shit. It's fucking been done before, but it's, let's do this, Kevin. Bacon. What does that say you know for Kevin Bacon now? Huh? That Six degrees to Kevin Bacon. That now, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not saying that this isn't a smart move for him, but it does kind of feel like, hey, this is the end of the line for Kevin Bacon. Well, you could like, say all that. Right, I'll do a Tremors sci-fi original. I don't know though. I TV think it, series. I don't know if it's the end of the line for him. Yeah, sci-fi has has picked up a lot of momentum over the years. But not just because it's on sci-fi. I feel like if they're going to do Tremors, they're going to do it with or without him. And I think he was just kind of like, "Hey, well, do you want to be a part of this and jump in as like your last role?" And he probably was like, "Yeah, fuck it." Well, they've done like the last what three movies without him. Well, no, I know that, but I feel like bringing it back now, they probably gave him the option, and rather than take it or not take it, he's not really doing much. Who was clamoring mm. for this? Who knows? Who is who just you know what, couldn't the, wait this for is, a Tremors TV series? To me, to me, like this has a chance to succeed because it does. I've seen the uh, Ash versus Evil Dead, which yeah, I, that did well. Which yeah. is on, on Star I haven't, yeah. and, and I haven't caught up on another, the second season. First season was excellent. Yeah, and it's another Love it's it. another series that's based Welcome on, back, a, on a B movie, mm-hmm. um, and and it's a and. If you're going to do a television series based on a movie, doing it on a B movie is the perfect fucking vehicle because it, it it's low budget to begin with. Agreed. So you don't have to break the bank to make it look or or be, you know, like congruent with the the original. Right? Right. So I mean to me this can be a, a success. Um, it's something that I think that I'll watch and I'll enjoy because I enjoyed the originals and it's not going to be worse than the original. There's no way that it can be worse than the, than the you original. You say that. Is he? And the reason why is because we've come so far that you have to like really fuck up to make it like worse, like at least visually than the original shit. Kevin Bacon. Is Kevin Bacon coming back for the show run or is he going to be one of those like shows up in the first episode and they're like, who's going to help us? And Kevin Bacon's like, I will. And then a Grabloid comes out and t- pulls him into the ground. Well, you have you have the forgotten. I mean, not the forgotten. The uh, the following. Mm. Right. Which is a, which was a Kevin There's Bacon still, series. I, it, that still just boggles my mind. But it was, a like, TV, it was a TV like series a that ran for what? following. But what was that? Three or four seasons that it ran for the following? Yeah, I think it was three seasons. Yeah, so three seasons the following ran for, and Didn't Kevin Kevin Bacon seasons. was involved in all of them. Yeah. So, I mean, he's he's now a television actor in my in my eyes. Like yeah. I, I haven't seen him in a movie since the following. I have. He's made like Death Sentence. And, uh, was that like a no. direct to DVD or Death Maybe, Sentence was yeah, before the following? That was probably before that was that was like at least two three years before yeah. the following. I don't know. I don't. 
I haven't been keeping up with my Kevin Bacon life. <laughs> I'm going on Wikipedia right now. Keep keep talking, guys. We're gonna figure this shit out. Well, so, we'll come uh, back to this. You you and uh, especially have been watching Glow on Netflix. Yes. What do you think of Glow? I fucking mm. love it. Well, Mark Maron's in it, who's an awesome right, comedian. Ren? He's <laughs> actually ooh, he's got a podcast called WTF. So check that out. Actually, like me only, not especially, but <laughs> yeah. me only. Well, yeah, let's be uh, honest. Me and, and my wife Becca and your wife. We already uh, finished it. It's fucking great. I mean. It's funny as hell. Like, it's it's super real. Like, I mean, the coolest thing about the show is that it's funny without being over the top and without being silly, which I find a lot of comedies doing nowadays. Like, you have, like, in order to get a laugh from somebody, you have to, like, fucking, it's got to be slapstick. Um, this is not slapstick at all. This is just, like, real life fucking comedy. Uh, I find it very close to what you might find in The Office, like, in the early days of The Office, uh, where you had, like, this, you know, really cool like almost a almost a documentary but not really a documentary but you're following these characters that are very real and down to earth and grounded characters that are just having real life issues that are funny because they're real um and and they just do a they do a phenomenal job Allison Brie is great uh Mark Marin is great um I, I just want more of this series already, and it, it sucks that it's a half, it's a half hour an episode. There's only ten episodes, which means that in five hours you're done. Um, but hopefully that means that season two is going to come on its way. Yeah, like home, almost immediately. Ho- hopefully, since the following has ended, Kevin Bacon has been in Black Mass, the movie The Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a little known movie around here called Patriots Day. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, about the Boston Marathon. Yeah, that's Yeah, he was one of the That cops. was relatively recent. Mm-hmm. So so he and, hasn't really uh, been in any, anything since the following is what we are saying. What is the Patriot I'm sorry. I, I, well, Patriots Day was authored with Mark Wahlberg, right, Ren? <laughs> oh my god. That I do not know. I I know my Mark He's Wahlberg. In that. I Who's going to watch that? That's depressing. You're going to watch it. I don't want to watch that. I he's have bad like memories. the heartthrob cop. Oh, does he take his shirt uh, off while he's Oh, my God. That lady got her legs blown off. Terrorists. Yeah, like, oh, that's attractive. Lady. Let me watch that. Oh, my God. Lady, come on. Lady, come on. That's right. You're going to be okay. Say hi to mother for me. Oh, my God. In heaven where she's going because she has no legs. <laughs> well, no, maybe she won't, but her mother will be fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Say hi to your legs for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. It's terrible. So in uh, – so, so in, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> if I so lost in, my legs. Where are you I going with that? In Glow, there's, <laughs> yeah. in Glow, there's, there's this character that she, she's, a, she's a she-wolf. Is this Alison Brie's character? No, I can't. I don't know who the actress is. I can find out. Okay. Um, but she's a she wolf, and it's really it's really funny because like this is this is a show that takes place in the eighties. So like all the all the Love weird it. shit and all the all the strange people that are are accepted now in this in this society that we're in in two thousand seventeen, mm-hmm. right? In nineteen eighty, that shit was like completely like fucking like we were everything was just budding it was like very everything was all like fucking encapsulated um and and so like it was really cool to get that that sense that feeling uh from this character she's uh sheila the she-wolf but like she is like it's not it's not a character for her like she Mm -hmm. just she just feels like her spirit animal is the wolf Ah, and she just and she just lives that life (laughs) sheila the she-wolf my mom's name is sheila but that's cool I'm looking it up right now. IMDb. Is there music from the '80s in it though? Because oh yeah, everything. The 80s. Oh, I'm everything fucking watching is, it. Everything is music from the '80s. There's no music that is like new music or or music that everything, you haven't heard everything before. Everything from the '80s. What about from Third Eye Blind? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably sure. I'm pretty sure it's in there. Uh, let's see. What about Ty Dolla Sign? Oh yeah, <laughs> Ty Dollar Sign. What is that? I don't know. I thought I thought that was a. Thing. That's some new type music. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new ish. <laughs> he has a song with the weekend. It's Gail Rankin. I don't know what else she's been in. Let's see. I don't know. Um, what else has she been in? Known for, it goes quiet. The Mayowitz story. 
uh, Frank the Bastard. So she's known for nothing, but she will be known for Glow. Uh, Glow is fucking funny as hell, Whoa. and she's great in it. Glow. Uh, this series, by the way, uh, Tony, you'd, you'd be interested in this. This is actually produced and in, in, uh, you know, put forth by the people that did Orange is the New Black, which you also wanted to talk about. Oh. Hell yeah, man. Did, Dude, did you know that? I did not know that. That's actually really good. That's really cool. Are they still really in the cool. prison? Um, yes, this season they were. Oh, but, but there's a but. <laughs> yeah, but this season actually only took place over like the course of three days. Like the entire season wow. because there was a riot in the prison and they basically locked the doors and they were basically doing their own thing in the prison for like three days. Nice. So... I don't know. I mean, this this season got a lot of a lot of from what I've heard from just like people I know that watch the show have been like bashing it, saying like, oh, this season was wasn't as good as the last couple seasons. Like, I actually personally thought this was probably one of the better seasons because it was different from like them just being in a prison doing like the regular shit like they in the last season, um, one of the one of the uh, inmates, her name was uh, Pusey, actually died she got she one of the guards was trying to like hold down somebody and and sat on her and and he b- didn't realize that he was sitting on her neck and was actually like cutting off her air supply and killed her by accident so so there are a lot of like, like that's not the first time he's done that so this is like a lot of this <laughs> is the inmates all just banding together like a lot of her, her friends specifically, one of her friends, um, more importantly, is actually really pissed about what happened and feels like that guard hasn't been like held accountable for what he's done and doesn't feel like they're being treated fairly in the prison. Like they're, She goes on to this whole thing about how like they, they have this riot and they start making all these demands and they realize that the prison has the money but isn't putting funding into like the correct nutrition for everybody, mm-hmm. isn't, uh, isn't giving them... Um, things that women uh need for like hygiene and stuff like and there's they don't even give them like uh tampons you know like shit like that so she's going off on that but also says like they just be treated like humans you know instead of just like these these women in a prison who are constantly getting treated like shit the guards are rude the guards are are awful to them so i mean in in the grand scheme of things it was a very interesting season and it has it just I don't know. There, there's, it, there was a lot of shit that happened that I don't want to spoil for anybody that has wa- that mm-hmm. watches it. But I thought this season was probably one of the better ones, and I really enjoyed it. So I think it's uh, if you if you haven't caught up, m- this might be the time to do it because it's obviously not going to have another season for like what a year. Or is something. this is this the breakout season for Jason Biggs? Jason Biggs isn't in any well. He isn't in it as much as he used to be. Like he probably was in it this season for maybe maybe four minutes. Nice. And it was it was a flashback. Oh, he's you know in places because he's not. He, so the main character of Piper. Yes. Um, he's actually not with her anymore mm. because he found out that she was like messing around with like an ex girlfriend that happens to be in the same prison. So uh, when he found that out, he broke off the engagement and ended up actually dating one of. His one of Piper's friends that is not in prison, but will be soon. So, <laughs> so I don't know. It's just it's uh we we don't see much of him. So, with that All being right. said, it's worth checking out. How, did any of you guys watch Orange Is the New Black? I like, watched like the first five episodes. I've really? never watched yeah. it. In my you couldn't life. get into it. I couldn't get into it because it was just like the reason why I stopped watching and reading Walking Dead like oh it's the same prison shit like wow so interesting I love it we're in prison yeah but I mean like so it, it just like what? because it was in prison though oh, like, yeah. no mean? it's it's just like oppressive and you're like cool this woman threw her entire life away and then you're like oh the hot girl from that 70s show is also here in a hotter version with glasses mm. you're like oh they used to bang cool that feels kind of like gimmicky like Oh, she used to be a lesbian, and now she's in a woman's prison. So this is where a former lover pops up. Like, it just felt, I don't know, it didn't feel organic to me. And I was just like, I, I can't get into it. And then as the seasons went on, people would be like, Crazy Eyes is the best character. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Well, I will oh. say this. I will say this. She, it, If you watch the first five episodes, like, I kind of felt the same way. Yeah. But, you know, like my wife was into it. So I kind of mm-hmm. just kept watching. And because of that, I actually got kind of 
even more invested in it. Okay. And the second season, there's a whole nother like layer of shit. Like you start, it's like, yeah, it's in a prison and it's like, all right, it's yeah. The whole like oppression thing comes yeah, out. Yeah. Like we shouldn't be in here. You know, like we have rights. It's like, all right, well you're in prison. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but it's like, you know what I mean? Like you, you're here for a reason, okay. but I, I think that it, in overall this, the seasons do build upon each other. Mm-hmm. And I also think that, the girl who plays Crazy Eyes, mm-hmm. I forgot that actress's name. She's phenomenal. Like, if you have actually, if you, she's won, like, uh, awards recently, like, an Emmy for this she's, show. She's great from she's what I see. She's fucking brilliant. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she, like if you've heard her on stage, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I know that's not her. But, right. like, when you actually are so familiar with her character, and then you see her on stage accept an award, and she's extremely articulate, I'm like, holy shit. You know, she's great. Cooley, what's up? One thing that i found interesting in Mm -hmm. in this whole conversation one thing (laughs) one thing because most of it was just orange is the new black blah 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 that's what we're talking about (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. is the comparison of orange is the new black to the walking dead yeah which happens to be and, and this is one of the best things about this podcast is that we all have differing opinions um the walking dead happens to be my favorite, one of my favorite shows on television, and it's one okay. of the best rated American shows on Gods. television. Oh, sure. American Gods. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, oh, American sure. Gods. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> American Gods was um, has has now taken over as my favorite show on television. Before American Gods, so good. The Walking Dead was my favorite show on television, and before The Walking Dead came out, the comic book was my favorite comic book like ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's still it's still fucking awesome to this day. And I've been reading it. I haven't missed an issue uh, since issue one. Um, wow. And it's like I just I just find Kirkman's character work to be fucking outstanding. Um, what is it about The Walking Dead for you that just turned you off to the series? Like, cause, oh, gosh. And, and how and how do you compare it to Orange is the New Black, which is weird to me? OK, so. I started maybe like graphic novel five into it. Um, that's when you started. That's when I started. So you didn't start with issue one. No, I oh, started well, like. That's probably why. Okay. No, so no, I, no. I think... But I loved them. I loved them. Here's what went wrong. All right. So I'm spending about fifteen bucks per graphic novel. You know, I'm into it. I'm at you know number fifteen. We're still in the freaking prison. There's not enough developing. With every $15 I drop, like, I'm a very cheap woman in my 20s. There is so much other shit I could spend money on. And you haven't given me enough to be like, I'm going to keep making this investment every month. Like, And see, I think that's – so that's something that a lot of people find themselves in. That trap is something that a lot of people find themselves in, which is they wait for the graphic novel. They spend $15 on it, and mm-hmm. they wait for the next one. They spend $15, and it feels – you feel that. You feel I spent fifteen dollars yeah. on this, right? Like if you were spending two ninety nine a month, right? Okay. And, and and you got through like if you start it from the beginning, issue number one, and spent fifteen dollars a I'd month. I'd still be pissed because I spent three dollars and there's even less development than an entire graphic yeah, novel. Yeah, but you, but you could also just watch the show though and not spend. And then any I watched money. the show and the characters that I loved weren't in it, and it was like, oh, but Daryl's the upside. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, Carol's even worse, if possible, when the show starts. Like, now, like, I'll jump in um, because I have a job where I have to keep current with these things. And I'll be like, okay, Carol's a badass now. But in the comics, she is so fucking terrible. You're like, thank God, please kill her. Well, she's dead in the comics. Yeah, she yeah. dies. She died in the, at, in the she prison. She dies, but it takes forever. You're like, oh, my God, I don't care if you're a mom. Just go. So, so, so for me, <laughs> like, I, I still feel, I still feel to this, to, like, moms have new, no place in the new world. <laughs> I still don't. feel like, like, even though you said that's not, that it's not the case, I still feel like if you had started from the beginning and you got invested into, you know, Rick and... Well, I did start with the beginning. It was just, like, the fifth one had already dropped by then. Like, I didn't pick up five and was like, oh, backtrack. Like, I... I saw the fifth one was out, and I was like, what the hell is this? Like, the the covers were interesting to me. I think, like, the graphic novel, like, seven, eight, or nine had, like, this pregnant woman, seemingly pregnant woman on the cover with, like, a dude holding it and then, like, zombies in the background. I was like, what the fuck is this? Mm. Like, <laughs> what? Like, you know, you know the story. Was it a boy or a uh, girl? <laughs> oh, my God. 
what that that baby is the, long gone. That baby's long it's gone. In, in 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 the show, it's a girl. Yeah. Because they allowed the baby to be born. Oh yeah, no. In, yeah. The, in the comics, the baby's Blown dead. Blown away. Yeah. Like they killed they killed mom by shooting her through the stomach while she was pregnant. So baby and mom were dead in one yeah. shot. You know what I would love to see? Zombie mom rips open her own stomach, grabs the baby from inside, and starts eating it. Wow. That's dark, man. What happened to you? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now let's just take a second to hear a little bit about our sponsor. Supply and demand investing. Guys, not all investments are created equal. Did you know growth stocks devote most of their revenue in trying to expand or grow the company and offer investors little to no dividend payout? Sounds like fucking bullshit. Right? But value stocks split their revenue between trying to expand or grow the company and give their buyers dividend payouts. That sounds better. But the question is, which of these two means of investing do you think has performed better over the past 10 years? Well, to find out, go to supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. That's us, guys. Go to supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. Supply and demand investing helps compare investments in the hopes of delivering better than average results, whether they be long term, short term, or just something in the middle. And remember, like any good sports team, like the New York football giants. Yeah. When it comes to investing, there are times to play offense by investing in things like the S&P 500 and times to play defense by investing in things like bonds, CDs, or cash. So I say, go Patriots. Yeah, but if we're talking defense, it's the New York football giants all day. Yeah, uh, but it's the Pats because they won last year. So this is happening. It's a real thing. Michael Phelps is going to race a fucking <laughs> great white shark. Well, he's not going to race a shark. He's going to be chased by a shark. Well, from and no, from chased? what I no, I, he's going like to race. Shark, that's what I want. The shark doesn't know it's a race. Well, no, sh- see, he, he, but here's what I heard though. This isn't uh, like those shows on HBO where, like, for a, a <laughs> month before the fight, you like you see the <laughs> training. Like the shark is just fucking there in the water, and then you put Michael Phelps in the water. Well, this is what I think is going to happen. I actually think that they're going to because you can't just like, you know, drop Michael Phelps in the water or just like or just be like, come on, shark. And he's going to like go at full speed. Yeah, I think that what they're going to do is actually film and clock a shark going at its top speed and then literally and film that and then have Michael Phelps jump in a fucking pool and have him swim at his fastest and show you them side by side and see who wins. No one wants to see that. But I don't think that they're unless they put them in some kind of a. Uh, situation where they block it off and the shark can't get get in a- at him. That's the only way uh, that they would do that. that. And it, and if that was the case, the shark isn't just gonna go at top speed because he's in the water with him. Like when a shark kills somebody, it circles first and then goes in when it wants. I say, I say, get a long pool. <laughs> right before Michael Phelps jumps in, fucking scratch his leg. I said this. Yeah. Yes. Or just jump, throw some jump chum in the water, at the end of the water. You know? Let it let the yes. typo negative or whatever just swirl around you in the You can't do it though. You can't do it cuz Give it a 5 Yeah, but you're injuring start, Michael Phelps. And then splash. Yo, if Michael Phelps can't be the shark, then he has no will to live. Yeah, but he also shouldn't be injured before he gets into the water to race the well, shark. The shark isn't injured. But we're That's not, not talking it's, it's a cut. Well, yeah, we're not talking That's about a, a severe injury. You don't need to do that. that you can stop no, him from fucking you can, being able to you swim. You can dump Chum in the water, and it's still blood that the shark is attracted. You don't have to cut yeah, the but swimmer. Yeah, but while Michael Phelps is swimming, Great. he's bleeding. Sweet. Okay, and the I don't care. Following that. Put some fucking fish heads in his swim trunks and just let him go. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if it was Jabberjaws? I don't know. The what cartoon Jabber shark. Is. Oh, wow. I forgot about him. Oh, I know what Jabberjaws is. What a dickhead. Didn't he have like a stupid look? Who? Oh, it was short, good. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he did. I never wanted to be his. I was never a Hanna Barbera fan. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, though, like I don't know about you, but like this might be like a minute and a half. But I'm it's the, probably the only part of Shark Week that They're I'm gonna, gonna fucking watch. They're gonna have to watch. clock it because 
Yeah. It's like proven that you can't have sharks in captivity. They, Thank you. The ampullae of Lorenzini, the electrosensors yeah, the in, the sensor snout, in, the, in the snout, it just messes them up and they just go fucking crazy and they'll end up killing themselves, like thrashing into things. Mm-hmm. So you can't do that. And then a shark's top speed, like a creature that's 11 to 15 feet long, it's cruising at like 25, 25 miles, an, miles hour. an hour. He's going to cruise at like six. There's well, Michael no Phelps clocked. Way. Yeah, his time is six miles per hour. His yeah. fastest speed, which and I thought like, was faster than that. And they cruise at like six just regularly. Yeah, so, definitely. Do people, I don't know. Do people still just get stoked for Shark Week? No, because it's not. It's I the, feel so, like. Ren and I were talking about this earlier. The Shark Week for the past five like, years. We've learned everything is about just, sharks now. But it's just the <laughs> same. It's the same footage over and over again. That's all it is. You know what I mean? I think the coolest. They're a, they're a big fish. They got lots of teeth, black eyes. Yeah, but the coolest thing about Shark Week, I think, in the past, like, five, six years, maybe eight years, was actually where they had that guy who actually swims with, with great whites. And he actually uh, he does something where he puts them into tonic, where he turns them over yeah. and, like, actually makes them go to sleep. But, like, there was, dude, the coolest fucking shit, because I, I bought the documentary, this great white is swimming at him. He reaches out, touches his snout, and pushes the thing away, and he just goes around him. It's like anybody else in that situation would be fucking freaking out, yeah. be dead. <laughs> like that YouTube you know I mean? video where the mo- where like the the wife's going, "Don't touch the shark." <laughs> I don't know that one. I haven't seen that one. <laughs> Truer words have I, never been said. I honestly don't give a fuck about this race unless it's exactly what you described. Like, oh, they, of course. Like Who cares? He, he, they cut his foot. He jumps in the water. The shark chases him. If the shark catches him. Game over. If the shark doesn't catch him, he needs to wait about fucking maybe another fifteen. Well, then you're obviously not going to fucking watch it then, because that's never going to happen. Right. Uh, so, so it's not because fucking... we know how that ends. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a like... fuck, so it's dumb. Yeah, but I mean, then. But it's still it on, interesting. Pay per view. You know? It's still interesting. A lot of people tune yeah. in to right. see Owen Hart right. hit his head it's on a turnbuckle. <laughs> you guys want to leave me hanging? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, listen, man, I know you got to head out, dude. I don't want to keep you, but... Uh, yeah, no, that's what I wanted to end it on. Yeah. <laughs> you got to jump out a little bit early. So, dude, thanks for coming on, man. No I appreciate problem, it. guys. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your podcast. All right, bro. Later. All right, I'm going to do drugs in my car. <laughs> Later, bro. Oh, man. So, um, yeah, we'll just kind of continue this. I um, A couple of the things that I wanted to jump on to was um the whole bill cosby thing oh, like geez. uh it's just the topic right so bill cosby uh obviously went into to court it was deemed a mistrial and uh and you know i don't know F- for me when the whole bill cosby thing came out part of me was like oh like that's kind of bullshit that this guy that i really looked up to as a comedian is a fucking asshole and now i don't know how to respect him anymore um, when maybe like one or two women came forward, it was a little more believable when like fucking 27 came forward. I found it a little bit hard to believe. And I felt like everybody was trying to get a piece of the pie. Like, um, Oh, I just want my fucking money. And I don't care if I'm this person who's looked at as a victim that was raped by Bill Cosby. At least I'll be rich. Like that's kind of what I got from that. I find it very hard to believe that a man with this popularity and this amount of uh, uh, celebrity fame is going to do this to this many women and go unnoticed in any way, or that they, that none of them came forward before like two of them did. I understand it might've been like a fear thing. And I respect that. Like you don't want to be the first person to come out and say something. And as more came out, the co- they felt more comfortable saying so. And I understand that, but I just didn't ever believe that it was that, many women so i never understood how this was actually going to go to court and he was going to be convicted when apparently this has happened with so many years passing like i don't know if i'm the only one that feels like that so i mean there's different degrees of of yeah it's really insensitive to say but like i myself would be like fucking ghost dad touch me where my paycheck at like immediately right yeah all these people were just like oh like i can understand like intimidation factor the fear like even like a sixth sense of like this dude totally sexually assaulted me, but like 
he's still famous. He's and it's powerful. Gonna, yeah, it's going to yeah. ruin his reputation. Like, there's still, like, a sick factor of, like, yeah. well, he's everyone's favorite dad on TV. Like, I how just... am I going to win if I go up against that? Yeah, I'm you know, sure, like, that was a big thing of, like, he has lawyers and money. And, yeah. like, so there's multiple factors. We don't know these women's lives. But, like, it is really concerning when that many women step forward and you're like are these all true and you start to just be like i can't see how this many women could just go this long without saying anything i think that's what it was it was like it lost its credibility after a while little perspective i i spoke to you today Mm -hmm. about a trick to trick the parking attendant yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) until i get caught (laughs) I'm going to do that shit as many times as I fucking can, right? So so just – just, and I'm not saying that it's true, and I'm not saying that he did this to 27 women. But if he did this shit and he didn't get caught mm-hmm. and he was just like, all right, well, shit worked. Fucking do it again. I, yeah, I would keep going. And you going, just keep fucking going. If like, I was a terrible becomes, person, yeah. It becomes an addiction. And when you become addicted to something, you do that shit more often than you would probably like to. Yeah, right? no, he. it's like an so, ego boost because it's all these beautiful women. He's like, I get away with it. I'm Bill Cosby. Exactly. So so do I think that it's possible? Sure. Yeah, probable, I do don't I know. Do I think it's probable? Sure. Do I think it's likely? Probably not, right? So, like, I, I, I am on the fence just like you guys are, but, I mean, I'm just to, just to give a little bit of perspective, I mean, when you get away with something, there is a little bit of a rush. Yeah. And it's just like, hey, this is, you know, this is how you do it. I'm a master at this shit. When you take refills from a place that doesn't do refills. Exactly. Oh, my God. All the cherry Pepsi. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so blessed. All the Jello. Just saying. <laughs> <All the jello. laughs> I'm saying. Like, how many cherry Pepsis, though? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's so what I'm many. I can't stop. More than 27? Oh, if it's a place in the mall that I work at, I keep the cup. I rinse the cup and I go back and I'm like, just here for my refill. <laughs> Wilt, like, Wilt Chamberlain, <laughs> right? Wilt oh. Chamberlain. <laughs> wow. And they're like, wow, she's not <laughs> being honest. Yo, can, we, <laughs> can we just address Wilt Chamberlain? Though? I am aware of him. Like, you know, like his 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 reputation with the ladies. Mm-hmm. And that's an addiction. That's just like I I have the ability to do this. Why the fuck not? Boom. Done. Right. So like so like I think like when you come to like a Bill Cosby, uh, if if he got away with it once and the first one is true, I don't see why 27 is out of the question. Because it just doesn't seem like it just doesn't seem for you or for me or for Ren or for anybody who's listening. No, it doesn't seem likely like I like I probably wouldn't get away with one. But Bill Cosby with... I'd have more if I had Bill Cosby money and that's fame. What, that's what I'm saying. And if I was, like, really terrible, if I was the devil, and I was just, like, I can sexually assault women, like, all day, every day, I'd be, like, five a day. It becomes a reason. <laughs> it becomes Jesus a reasonable... Christ. It becomes a reasonable number. That's wow. all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. No, like... <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised it's not more, but, like, when 27 step forward, you're like, holy crap, like... How many of these are actually true? And it's terrible because we do that to women so often when men are like, oh, this happened to me. We're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Nobody, so has, a, nobody has a problem with Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. You got a forced blowjob. <laughs> like, ben but, Roethlisberger, <laughs> like, I think four people came forward. Yeah. yeah. And nobody has a problem with him. Yeah, but when it's like women, it's like, whoa, how many of y'all are faking it? Like, and it? And it's sad. But, like, even myself as a woman, I'm like, that's that's a really high number like i question it but i'm like if it's probably true though because you look at bill cosby and he's batshit fucking crazy and you think about batshit crazy mixed with drugs alcohol fame all that money like you can get away with a lot i mean there was the whole shit with like dave Chappelle, who like there was before dave Chappelle came back and did his own thing like he like he had there was a whole thing where, like, they were saying he got run out because of his his brand of comedy. Yeah. And Bill yeah. Cosby and Oprah Winfrey were not fucking happy with him. And he was just like. About what? Like, he was threatened by them. To About fucking, what? To stop doing what he was he doing. He went, like, crazy and was, like, in Africa running with Ryan. Yeah, but what shit. was he doing his comedy that they were, like, no, stop? No, because, because, of, because of his use of the, the term nigger and his. Oh. 
Oh, and his, fuck that. Like, uh, you say, oh, my God. Oh, my say, God. Listen no, to no, Cat no, no, Williams. Hold on, hold on. Jesus you Christ. But you, but you can't say well, you can't say fuck that. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 something that they that they were upset with him be, for becoming as powerful as we, he was becoming because Dave Chappelle was on top of the fucking world when the Chappelle show was out. And oh, it was yeah. Out, and it was like there's no other reason for that show to stop being an amazing show and to stop airing and for him to quit and for him to run away from it. So so for him to run away, there had to be a reason. And I, I actually believe in the conspiracy theory that Bill Cosby and this black Illuminati oh my right, God. were yeah, like, well, I think we're like, we're like, no, you need to put the kibosh on this now. And your brand of comedy is not is not doing well for the black community. I don't yeah, know I, I honestly don't. I did completely disagree with that. I, I honestly the, the the way that it goes is Dave Chappelle was on uh, inside the actor's studio and he's been in multiple multiple interviews with people where he said that the reason why he stopped doing the Chappelle show was because producers and all these other people came up to him and said that they wanted him to do the show in a certain way. And he said he didn't want to do that. And they were like, well, we're not going to put the money anymore. You're going to do it our way or you're not going to do it at all. And he was like, good, then fuck you, I'm out. And then all of a sudden the media came down on him and started saying all this false shit about him. And he almost lost his mind. So he left the United States and went to Africa to kind of regroup. Like, that's what happened. So the whole Oprah thing and Bill thing, I've never heard about that. Like, I've never heard about any of that. So much passion. I'm going to send you some links. No, go go ahead, man. I mean, it's fine. But I mean, like, for, for him to basically, like, say that shit on, on national TV in multiple interviews, like, yeah, okay, maybe he's going to take the professional Whoa. high road if I and was, say that if he had to say it. If I but was it just doesn't seem like that's the thing. If I was threatened and told that my career was going to be fucking, like, fucking kaput, and my name was going to be mud, and my family was going to suffer for it, I would say whatever I had to say, too. That's all I'm saying. Well, it, honestly, dude, that's what his career turned into for a little bit anyway. So it didn't matter. It, it, people like Dave Chappelle didn't do shit for like 10 years. No, 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 no. S- sorry, like, hold on. His career didn't become shit. People started saying, where the fuck is Dave Chappelle? If his career was shit, it would be somebody attacking him and shutting him down and he wasn't shut down he did it on his own he went out on his own terms but he did it because he was threatened and and that and i believe in that i actually believe it but his career almost went to shit because a lot of people said that he was fucking crazy because he went to africa and pulled this like crazy stunt where nobody heard of him people thought he lost his mind so he lost a little bit of credibility for a while and it took him about a decade to get to regain that credibility Think about so his think career about being, wasn't the shitter for about ten years, dude. He just came back. Think about being a Comedy Central executive, right? And Dave Chappelle is doing the Dave Chappelle show, and he's fucking crushing it. Why would you want him to do something different? Because they, they because they, so 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 the only reason the only reason would be racism and like oh I want you to fucking put a dress on or I want you to do X Y and Z. And I think this would be more funny because you're black. That's the only thing that would that would fucking do that. But fuck that because money trumps everything, and they're making as much money as they can. As much they money as you wanted, can possibly they make. They wanted a say in 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 some things on the show, and and our, and Dave Chappelle was the was the artistic director of his own show. They wanted to actually push him down a level. And have control over different faucets in the show. Whether it was over material or whatnot, we're not going to know. He wanted full control over it, and they weren't willing to give that to him. So he said, fuck you, I'm out. All right, let's, let's, let's put this in perspective. And I'm going to put this in some real-life perspective, something that we can all relate to. We have a podcast, and we have a sponsor. Mm-hmm. And we make some money off the sponsor. And we invite Ren to be on the podcast. Hello. Ren hey. is on the podcast. As soon as she jumps on the podcast, mad people start listening and we start getting like these offers from more fucking sponsors, right? And then Ren starts becoming like the face of the podcast. And then as egotists, we're like, oh, well, Ren, we need you to do blah, blah, blah because we want to be in control because it's our podcast, right? And and so Ren's like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that because that's fucking sexist. And if you want, <laughs> oh, if you want me to do that, I'm out. 
what are we going to do? Are we going to say, okay, well, let's go back to having one fucking sponsor? Or are we going to just be like, all right, well, fuck it. Like, you know, we'll, we'll work it out. What would you do? Like, and just think about it in those terms and then think of the business of Comedy Central and say, okay, well, Comedy Central wants to maintain, maintain control. Sure. But when Dave Chappelle says, fuck it, I'm out, Comedy Central is going to say, nah, 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 Dave, hold on, buddy. We're going to work this out because you're making us mad fucking money right now. Right. But at the same token, if it's something that you're you're that passionate about and you've gotten it to where it is because of decisions you're making without somebody else putting their two cents in, that's something that can be a, a pressure point for people. And I think that Dave Chappelle being the comedian and the creative person that he is and also having a, a very powerful voice in, in any time – as somebody who's an African-American and who had made it to those heights, he's like, I'm fucking doing this shit on my own. I don't need any of this. So he literally got pressured by like, he, dude, he was getting pressured from multiple angles. And then he was just like, I'm done because they were going to, they were also going to cut funding if he didn't do what he was going to do. So before they, before they burned the house down, he left the house. You know what I mean? And I feel like I have to respect him for that. You know what I mean? Cause he's like, this was something that I built He's like, you're going to jump in and that, and all of a sudden I don't want you want, I, I don't want to do what you want to do. So you're going to fucking, you know, try to try to change this and make it into something that I don't stand by. I'm out. And if I'm not going to be a part of it, you know, this shit's not going to succeed. So peace. And like, I get that and I respect that. So that's just me. I don't know. What do you think? I don't mean, we've kind of already talked about it, but I mean, are you on the same? I'm on the same page as like, you know, as Dave. As Dave, yeah. Yeah, because you create this brand for yourself. Your name is now attached. It is your name on the literal show. Right. And, you know, you get to have fun. You're having so much fun with all your friends. You know, Charlie Murphy is there. Ripping right, these. right. You get to have Rick James Rick on James, telling stories yeah. about, you know, how he beat the crap out of Charlie Murphy. Right. <laughs> it's awesome. And then the network steps in and they're like, Oh, well, can you stop making fun of like white people so much as like a news anchor? And can can you stop doing this? And so many white people are watching it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like what are you talking about? Yeah, and like uh, on, only the rich white people endorsing this show are really offended. Everybody else thinks the shit is hilarious. Uh, I'm gonna keep going because like they do they do the recaps of like oh man, here's this thing we were doing for the show and it didn't work out. But like let's just go back to this old dude. Just saying, like, let me holla at you, holla, 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 and just, like, him laughing his ass off. And, like, that's his brand of comedy. And they were like, we're very uncomfortable with this. I just don't understand how somebody can say, like, the white guy can be like, oh, this is making me a ton of money, but I'm offended. Like, dude, shut the fuck up and make money. Yeah, laugh all the way to the bank, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, who cares? Like, all right, you're offended, but you're making money off of this. So just, I mean... I mean, I guess if you're really offended and it's like a personal attack, then I get he it. He had wild problematic skits, though, like the black KKK member who was yeah, like. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> was blind. Yeah. yeah, that was funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like. That's like my favorite that, it was skit. actually it's one hilarious, of his. hilarious, but wild problematic when you're pulling in all those things, all those factors. You're like, how many people can I offend with one skit? But you know what the funniest thing was? Like, we say that we say that like, oh, like everybody had a problem with it. Or it was, it was like super problematic and people probably had issues. Yeah, well then why was like when he was on SNL and he brought in all his characters into The Walking Dead, that was like one of the biggest fucking episodes of SNL they've had recently. Dude, mm. you know what I'm saying? All these like, people, like that's not, that's not what it. I was saying. Well, I'm not, I'm just bringing that what up I'm saying, as, a, as All an, these people are example. two fucking people or like the, the black Illuminati, quote unquote. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's like a, it's a no cabal. Sense. It's basically a, a cabal of like the powerful, influential black community that was telling him, you need to tone it down. And they made it problematic for him. That's, mm-hmm. not, that's not necessarily the perception of the public. Like, I thought he was fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying that I didn't like Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle was my favorite fucking show. And when it went off the air, I was like, what the fuck happened? And this is when all this like Illuminati theory came out. Um, and again, I can send you the links. I mean, there was some really pretty fucking like, like accurate 
statements that were made. I don't know if it's Illuminati. It's just like rich people of all races and colors who were just like pissed off because they're like, Dave, you're giving us a bad name. Like, the, the term the term Illuminati is basically used loosely here. Like, I mean, it's not like, I mean. It's outside <laughs> forces of weirdism. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a cabal. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. my, cabal. My, a cabal of, of influential black people okay it's the character from mortal Kombat. O- oprah <laughs> <laughs> oprah winfrey bill cosby at the time uh you know and and whoever else who i don't i don't know who is also part of this community but okay but this group of people were telling him that he needs to back off and that was that to me that to me i believe that that's what broke him oh i don't see that as a thing at all Okay, that, that's don't. that's fine. I, I and I will show you. I will show you the evidence that I have. And when I'm done showing you the evidence that I have, I would be interested in seeing what you have to say. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. I'm probably gonna be in the same that, place that's fine. that I am now. All right. I just don't see. There's no way to it could, because it's all theories. It's all it, unless he comes forth and says it, then Go. that's one thing. I want quotes. Like quotes that he said. That's exactly what happened. If it's theories that sure. people put together, then I will I, yeah, I'll definitely wait. Wait for quotes. Then like from I will. somebody from somebody who's fucking so afraid that he packed up and went to Africa. You're gonna wait for a quote. Can saying, you oh, imagine this is what Oprah happened. Winfrey making you fear for your life? I, I don't. <laughs> don't you imagine her not making you fear for your life? I mean, like <laughs> I just about don't. It. Oprah Winfrey tells you to shut the fuck up. What do you do? Ask for money and I'll shut the fuck up. And and what if she gives you money? <laughs> I'd be like, okay, thank exactly, you. Thank, thank you, you. Oh. but exactly. But, it's, but I'm not saying quotes from I'm not saying quotes from from Oprah Winfrey or Bill Cosby. No, from Dave Chappelle. I'm saying they made him shut the fuck up. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna give quotes now? No, no. It's so not what, gonna happen? That's not what I'm saying, man. I said I want quotes from him, talk saying that specifically. Like he's not Monica Lewinsky. I mean, he's not going to fucking come forward later. Like so, wasn't... yeah. So that's what I'm saying, though. So you're saying like you have all this evidence, but you don't. Like unless he's come forward and said it, and then somebody has theories about it, then it's not evidence. It's a theory, man. Like I want legit evidence that that is what you is, is supposedly what happened. When it, what, listen, I'm sending it to you. Period. <laughs> when you read it, if you don't read it, whatever. If you read it, whatever. If oh, I'll like read it, it. <laughs> but I, I still might have my own opinion. If you believe it, you believe it. If you don't, you don't. But I'm telling you what the fuck, what I've read and what I believe. And All right, what I word. believe is that he went to Africa and left his show because he was he was pushed out by Oprah Winfrey, Bill Cosby, and the rest of the crew. All right. Was Dave so, Chappelle on the docket tonight or not? Nah? No, I, I was no, <laughs> just, this just became a thing. I was, thing. I was just going to say, I don't think Bill Cosby had sex with 27 girls. <laughs> That's, I, That's I, how we got here? Yeah, the Bill Cosby Whoa. thing. Yeah. Did you know that Hannibal Burris, comedian full circle, was one of the first people that said Bill Cosby raped all those people? In oh, yeah, and he got like so much flack for it. Yeah, and now apparently he, Hannibal Burris. He's like, I told y'all. He Which is weird. I'd women's. like to know why he thought that. There's some stuff behind that, too. So, but, um, um, yeah. so, so Marvel is actually going to release the Inhumans on September 29th. Yeah. It's going to be two weeks after the IMAX premiere. So it's going to come out in IMAX first for two weeks. I'm going to fucking see that shit. In IMAX, what's what's the the general perception here? On the oh podcast? yeah, I'm gonna I'm see going it. to see it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. are you excited for it though? I'm very excited. Like Marvel's been pumping out Netflix stuff that I'm just like, uh, I don't really know. Like everyone's like, oh, Daredevil was the tits. I loved it. I watched an episode and I was like. It's cool. You watched like, one episode? Though? I watched one episode, That's though. not enough. I know, but if it doesn't draw me in, I'm not going to continue. Yo, oh, continue. you've got to give it Yo, more than one real. fucking episode, I don't know. Ben you Affleck ruins up, right? everything. No, you, you, yeah, I, I second. He you already fucked ruined up. the <laughs> No, you fucked up. Big you time. gotta see it. You Go gotta watch it. I'll back. give it another try. But in the meantime, though, <laughs> um, and humans is just like an infinitely more interesting like storyline, interesting episode. characters. Like Medusa's a babe. Now they've done Inhumans on on Agents of Shield, mm-hmm. um, but this is actually the royal family, which is really yeah. cool. Um, you've got you've got Black Bolt. You've got Medusa. Um, Maximus, who's being played by the dude that plays uh, Ramsey Bolton. Yep. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. So oh. he was also in Misfits, which was a 
fucking awesome BBC show. I That's don't know if anybody's show, seen yeah. that. Have you seen the it? BBC. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's one of my favorite shows. Um, like from BBC. Uh, he's actually going to be Maximus, who, and he's perfect for that role because it's fucking Ramsey Bolton. Like, I mean, that dude was fucking crazy. And Maximus is a crazy dude. Like, that's that's his whole shtick. Um, I'm just really excited for this. Like, I know some people that aren't because they're just like Inhumans, what the fuck. But Inhumans are now, they're the new mutants for Marvel. I mean, Marvel doesn't have the film rights for mutants anymore. So no. what the fuck are they going to do? Inhumans is the next best thing. Yeah, there's so much you can do with it. I mean, it's still, it's still a fairly unknown i'll say even though they've tied the characters into so many different things like miss marvel's got in humans characters and they're doing so much with it right now in the comics where you know the royal family is freaking up and left and the rest of the humans are left to fend for themselves while hydra's like we're taking over everything you're in concentration <laughs> camps now it's you know there's so much that you can do within humans where the mutants have been like packaged so many different ways and you're just kind of like, oh, man, I'm going to see every X-Men movie, but... I think it's kind of so overplayed it's right now. It's played out, yeah. It's, like, so saturated with, like, mutant bullshit that it's, like, it's the same shit over and over again. Yeah, like, know? I saw, like, Apocalypse, and I was like, wow, I really wish we just stayed at the school the entire time because the teenagers are so, are so much more interesting. Here's right. the problem with mutants. Yeah. Here's the problem with mutants in 20th Century Fox. Um, what they do is they give you the X-Men movie. Mm-hmm. Then they give you X Men two, mm-hmm. then they give you X Men three. X Men three is bullshit, right? Oh my god, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. The Brett, the Brett Ratner X Men three was just a bunch of fucking just bullshit. It's garbage, straight garbage. So then they say, oh man, we got to do this again. Mm-hmm. So then they reboot it. So now we have mutants in a different light with First Class. Then First Class is a success. But then we get a uh, Days of Future Past, mm-hmm. which is something completely different than what First Class gave us. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> we get fucking whatever this 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 other one was. What was the fuck apocalypse? apocalypse yeah. Which was fucking like not really apocalypse. Like it was like it was like here's not a pop apocalypse, kind of apocalypse. It was like the Geico version of apocalypse, <laughs> right? Um, like, like. What the fuck was his power? Like, I, it's like you're watching this shit and it's just like, OK, well, it was just strange. Like they were like, yo, Poe Dameron, that actor's loved by everybody. Let's uh, stick him in this movie with like a really weird costume. You know, it's weird. I right. haven't seen that one yet. And that's actually the one that I have to watch. Really? Yeah. I wanted to see it. I just never got around to it. And it was on like the other day and I watched like five minutes. So I'm like, no, I need to start from the beginning. You know, so I have to definitely check that out. I'll I heard it wasn't you, like not, you don't fucking really... amazing, but it was good. You don't it need to. It left so much to be desired. Like it really <sighs> did. The casting choices like that. What's up? Olivia Munn from G4. Yeah, I she hate was in it, her. Really? Yeah, she's just like Psylocke and she just looks kind of like frumpy. She was good in Newsroom, though. I'll give she's her that. She's good in Newsroom, but like uh, yeah. the the casting was strange. Like Angel's a really, he's more a cherub. Like he's like is a, it? Oh, a yeah, round he is. face. Yeah, like I curly saw that. Haired. That's like the part I was watching. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. He's like, doesn't really fit the part, but like for the. 80s metal dude metal guy yeah, yeah like yeah. he fits the part but you'd look at him and you're like that's not an angelic dude that's like somebody who sells shoes like and like he was supposed to be <laughs> he was supposed to be archangel which is yeah like, yeah and he never became archangel it's like that was the thing about apocalypse that really fucked me up is that he didn't change any of them he just kind of convinced them to join to join his side but well, he, he never was like, like enhanced... now you got metal because you're into into metal right like that's yeah. that's your thing here you go yeah. You're welcome. I'm Apocalypse. Like, that was yeah. the thing. Yeah. I was, was really not fucking into what Apocalypse's power was. Like, Apocalypse, like, made his four horsemen. Mm-hmm. I never got the sense that they were the four horsemen. I, they never introduced them as death, war, pestilence. Right? It's implied, cool. It's implied. <laughs> but I don't appreciate the implication. Yeah. I, want, I want realness. Right? I want it to mm-hmm. be told. I want it to be said. This is... These are the four horsemen. Yeah, right? do it in like a cool way. Um, war, pestilence, death, famine. Like, give me, give me all of them as the characters and something different from what they were before. Because when you look at when you look at Archangel, mm-hmm. 
completely different from Warren Worthing- Worthington, mm-hmm. right? He's not the same character. He's not no. the same person. Um, when you look at uh, War, I don't know what War looked like before, but War is completely different. He's a completely he's a new being. Like everything that he does, like he, he it's like you go into a cocoon and you're reborn as like this this ridiculously powerful character mm-hmm. um, that is the embodiment of what you're supposed to be, whether you're war, pestilence, famine, or death. And I didn't get that from this from this movie. That you would, it was just Storm, Angel, fucking Psylocke, yeah, and Psylocke. Magneto. Like I didn't know who they were. I didn't know which one was which. Yeah. Who were they was who they were supposed to be? Like and the they didn't set- seem more powerful than they were supposed to be. They just seem like they're regular characters. Yeah, just like more intense. Like I made you more mad, and like yeah, that that was about it. But like there were aspects of it that I loved, and I was so pissed off because the rest of it was just so mediocre. Like when they did Magneto's like backstory, like he actually had a family and he had a daughter, and you you like really love this daughter for like the five seconds she's on film. You're like, oh, look at she's with the animals, and she dies, and he's really pissed, and you're like, whoa, that's a really good storyline. And they're like, oh, but now he's just going to go to work and kill people. And it's like, this is fucking dumb. Right. Why would you do this shit? This is so dumb. I'm just going to go back to being evil, Magneto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just because you killed my daughter, I'm going to take it on the wrong people, like everybody. Yeah. You're just like the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, this is stupid. And then they flash back and they do the cool things that we liked from Days of Future Past where they have Quil- Quicksilver like, running around really fast to music. We're like, that was great. Let's bring it back. You got the dog eating pizza while he's doing the running around. He's saving all these people. You're like, this is a really cool scene. I'm glad they brought it back, and it's kind of in a different way slightly than what they did the first time around. You're like, I really like this. And they jump back, and it's like, hi, I'm like weird melting face apocalypse just doing dumb bullshit. Yeah, and then you have, then like the ending is like the same bullshit that we got in Wonder Woman. Oh, okay. Like, oh, we beat Apocalypse with the power of love and togetherness. Like, these are my friends. They're with me. Like, that was Professor X, basically. He's yeah. like, oh, I still have my friends. And it's yeah. like, you know, the most powerful mind. <laughs> like, you need fucking, come on, you don't need the fucking rest of the X-Men. Just shut Apocalypse down. What the fuck? He's like, but I need to teach them. I need togetherness. Yes. Yeah, it's silly. It was fucking whack. silly. Um. Yeah, so that 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 was a major fucking rabbit hole that we went down because how did we even get here again? <laughs> because the inhu- because the Inhumans okay, are okay. are actually the mutants of the Marvel universe now, because Marvel yeah. doesn't have the rights to the X Men because they keep yeah. making bullshit X Men movies <laughs> to keep the rights. <laughs> That's at, real bad. At Fox. Yeah. yeah. So I have another topic that I just want to end with um okay fucking spawns coming to netflix mm. which i think is cool so i've been doing a ton of research on this and i still can't figure it out is michael jai white coming back as spawn i don't know because that's what i've been reading and i mean even though he's aged like he's still in like ultra good shape oh yeah and then you got but then i but then i'm also like I don't know if John Leguizamo is coming back, but I know, yeah. like, I find that hard to believe. But I'm also reading, like, Martin Sheen might come back as Wynn, which... I feel like it's just one of those things where you get the right people at the right time. Like, I don't know if Michael Jai White's going to come back. Like, he's fucking awesome. But this he is Black supposed Dynamite, to be... Black Dynamite, right? Yes. He's, but this he's is, awesome. But this is supposed to be a 2017... Yo, Black Dynamite's the shit. <laughs> he's so good. But this is... Excuse me, this is supposed to be a 2017 release. Like, they would have already casted these people. Like, I can't find anything except really? references to... Like, I know those were the people in the other movie, unless they're just going with the same people. But that was, like, in 97. That was a long time Wasn't ago. Wasn't it, like, 97? It uh, has to be by now. It's got to be, man. I mean, that was, like... Yeah, that's, there's no way. All but right, it's wait a 2017 minute. release? That's... Well, uh. Spawn is coming to Netflix next month. And this was a June 21st article. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, and I keep looking at it, and all I keep no, seeing read, is... Read the article for I me. I did read the article. No, I mean, like, if you go through the article, is it a series? Is it a new movie? Is it... Spawn the Supernatural Superhero Movie, which we recently called one of our favorite guilty pleasure films, is coming to Netflix in July. Maybe okay, the so movie yeah. is. So it's just the movie. The okay, movie's coming to Netflix. So it's just the movie. 
Yeah. Which I guess is fine, but I heard that I heard that there was also talks of a remake. Maybe that's why I'm being yeah, confused. Yeah, see, 2016 was like a reboot confirmed. Yeah, but, but see what I'm saying? Because I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So I was confused because Netflix has thrown so many movies on right now. Yeah, like, I, I, I wouldn't cool. be surprised. I'm cool with seeing the original, though, because that was the first, you know, true story. It's the first DVD I ever purchased. Yeah, Shut you know, up, really? you know what's, what's funny fun? though. Yeah. You know what's funny about Spawn I'm that, though. I'm, yes, I'm that old, Ren. Look <laughs> <Shut> at <up. laughs> yo. <laughs> check out, uh, check out Spawn again. Like just the beginning where like his fucking like masks comes on and shit. That's like, that's like the coolest CGI back then. Now yeah. it looks like shit, but it actually looks like like Transformers transforming yeah, type yeah. shit. Like. For when it came out, that was fucking epic. I was like, oh, shit, that's awesome. You know, but now True it's story. just like it's dodgy, like special effects. I mean, Spawn's been around for like 25 years this year. Yeah, yeah like Image has been like bumping out like a Spawn cover for everything. Yo, so Spawn, I don't know, man. Like I haven't read Spawn since fucking McFarlane left. It's one of those oh. things that, like, I work in a comic book shop, so people still come in and like, do you have Spawn comics? I'm like, nah, that's like... That peak, Tommy, like, it's been done. done. Yeah, like, yeah. there'll be weird reboots. I think they'd, like, spawn something or other. I forget the title. And they'd, like, one issue of it. And you could clearly tell, like, it's not very Spawn-esque. Dude, I have, like, <laughs> some of the original spawns in, like, fucking plastic. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But, I mean, like, everyone has that. So, it's not worth <laughs> shit. You know Yo, what I mean? But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm going to say this because you just said that it was, like, the Transformers, like, transforming and whatnot but yeah went, you saw it i went to go see I'm the latest sorry. transformers movie today <laughs> um, hey guys i found another transformer it was um transformers <laughs> colon the last night so is this the I last you were gonna one say colon shit <laughs> yeah colon, <laughs> colon cancer oh my god oh, wow all right oh wow that's 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 where i would go with that if i was gonna go that route um it was Look, I went with my nephew, and my nephew loved it. Loved it. He was 10. <laughs> um, as an adult, I can tell you that if you are not going with a child, do not go. <laughs> you, oh will not, you will not appreciate this film. Uh, Anthony Hopkins was delightful. He was great. I fucking loved Anthony Hopkins Like for all the scenes that he was in. I did see the, I did recognize the scene immediately when they ran out of budget to keep Anthony Hopkins in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> because he was just like, I gotta go, guys. <laughs> like, like he was like the, uh, he was like the guy that you're like, oh, he's gonna fuck shit up. He's gonna kick ass. You know? And then as soon as shit was about to hit the fan, he was like, all right, guys, so I'm gonna leave you here. Have a nice day. He was like, I'm hello, done. Clarice. Oh, wrong movie. Bye. Done with this production. <laughs> <laughs> Have oh a fun God. day. Hello, guys. Um, <laughs> it's good to see you again. Yeah, I, I mean, like, this shit was, like, Optimus Prime actually had a line in this film that was, I mean, I will remember this shit <laughs> till the end of my days, unfortunately. The line was, say hello to my little friend, Bumblebee. <laughs> and then Bumblebee jumps out from behind the villain and is like, pew, and, like, shoots the villain with his like laser arm rifle <laughs> and the villain disappears like and it's it's a power that Bumblebee has never had in in the fucking four movies ahead of this one <laughs> and then uh, the movie ends Q Lincoln Park song yeah what and, and that's dope and, and legit <laughs> legit no no legit though here's, here's the thing here's the thing no Lincoln Park song no Li no Lincoln Park song but Optimus Prime does Send another <laughs> message to the Autobots that may be out in space. This is a message to all the Autobots. We are here. We are waiting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm just like, really? Another fucking message? Like, they're not coming, bro. <laughs> like, like, what you got is what you got. That's it. Um, like, the the girl that's like, you know, like, she's like the, uh, the female and the protagonist and the uh, male protagonist, which is Mark Wahlberg again. Mm -hmm. um, hey, guys. Look, Ren loves the fact that Mark Wahlberg is in this movie, but I think she likes his <laughs> muscles more. I like his. Yeah, I don't love the fact he's in the movie. That's sad. I'm sorry he needs the paycheck. It's a terrible <laughs> movie from no. what I hear. Those commercials are great, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, your boy is. You're right, like, little kid. Little kid. What was it? Little kid character? <laughs> yeah. So bad. This movie was like. It was like if you took three completely different movies, 
right? Mm -hmm. And And shit on them. And tried to mash them together and then include it like a Geico commercial. Oh, no. Yeah, it was it was awful. Oh, Marky Um, Mark. Like like this dude was like subject to being the the meat for the (laughs) the the woman that was playing the protagonist who was also portrayed as this woman that needed a man because her aunt and her grandmother were like, oh, you need a man. Who also looked like poor man's Megan Fox again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, she was like kind of Megan Fox. That's why I said it was like a Geico commercial, by the way. <laughs> 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 Meet kind of Megan Fox, but she wasn't because she was British. That was the only difference. Oh, uh, Megan Fox. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh, and, and like, it was just really fucking weird. And, and, I don't know. It was just a bad movie. Like, I fe- I left that movie thinking, please let me go home and just watch fucking Batman Forever. Like, Joel Schumacher is a fucking phenomenal director compared to Michael Bay. That's terrible. I'm sorry mm. that happened to you. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. for your loss. Like, like, like Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Give me, give me Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze all fucking day. Like compared to she'll out, whatever. yeah. We right? killed the dinosaurs, the Ice Age. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, oh my god! Like, what was another? There was a line in the movie where, oh like, the god. military dude goes, the military dude goes like this. He goes, "Look, it's an alien ship," and it's like just like that. Like, I swear. Like, I mean, I think I did it with as much emotion as he did. It look. It's an alien ship. Did Keanu Reeves play this character? <gasps> no. <laughs> no. Shit, it was Josh Demel. I love Keanu Reeves. It was Josh right. Demel. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Fergie's Fergie's yeah. husband. Oh, yeah. and not not just Josh Demel. It's Fergie's. Yeah, by the way, fuck yeah. Like yeah, because that. I love like Keanu that. Reeves too. He's a fucking I li- baller. He's my number one. I love yeah. him. Josh Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, no! Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she is not Mrs. Dumel. He is Mrs. Fergie. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Times, can you just be like, we gotta yeah. wait for Optimus. <laughs> like, all right, dude. <laughs> Optimus was like, Opti- Yo, it was legit. Like, you remember that? Remember the shit in uh, Batman v Superman where like they're like, he says like, oh Martha, and he's and Batman just stops and he's all of a sudden like Superman's best friend. <laughs> oh yeah. Like that's the shit that happened in fucking Transformers where like they're like. They're like just fighting and shit like that, and like uh, and Bumblebee's like Martha. Bumble- no, <laughs> I, I wish he said Martha because that shit would be hilarious. But he said he said Optimus, I am Bumblebee, your best friend. And Optimus was like, Oh my god, this is the first time I've heard your voice in forever. I I am now cured of my fucking hypnosis. Like fuck you, fuck you. Just be op- just be Nemesis Prime and kick the shit out of everybody and just fucking call it a day. Dude, the best part in that happen. trailer, and it and it's only the best part in the trailer in the theater because it has that surround sound, is when they show Optimus with the fucking sword and it's slow-mo, you just hear the sword go... <laughs> like, that's the coolest part. That's the only part that I want to see in the movie, and that's it. <laughs> the Dinobots. <laughs> the Dinobots, right? Okay. Age of Extinction happened. The Dinobots happened. Everybody was like, oh, shit, the Dinobots. This shit is fucking awesome. Wouldn't yeah, you yeah. think that Paramount would be like, yo, the Dinobots, we need to include these motherfuckers in the movie. They were in the movie for five minutes. Oh, really? Wow. Five fucking minutes. You get the Dinobots. You don't even, they don't even transform. It's just fucking the dinosaur. Uh, you, oh. get, you, got, you get the T-Rex. You get the, t- the fucking... Uh, Triceratops? The, the, yeah, the, the, the three raptor? horn. Yeah, oh, the, triceratops. Triceratops. the Triceratops. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get the tri- you get the pterodactyl, mm-hmm. um, but you know you know what else though, you know you know what, what else? else though. <laughs> here's here's what else though, <laughs> you get baby fucking Dinobots for like five minutes as well. Oh, well, because they're parents now, they can't be in the violence, so they're not included in the film. Yeah, like you get like these little you get a little fucking baby T Rex, and they're like oh. You're a baby T Rex. You're so fucking cute, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like <laughs> fucking baby pterodactyl that was like, you know, like delivering beer to Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> that so like, didn't happen. Yeah, it did. Oh it did. God. There was I a baby pterodactyl. I want to see this movie. <laughs> there was a baby pterodactyl <laughs> that like opened the fridge, got beer, delivered it to Mark Wahlberg, and he was like, "Oh, it's a work in progress," and, and like. 
I don't know, oh, man. So basically, so was it bad. was it the rock? Was it the robot from Rocky Four? <laughs> oh my god! Fucking no! <laughs> I'm cleaning your house, Rocky. <laughs> it's fucking stupid, dude. No, That's what I it was, sounds like. Rip off. Here's of stupid. There's shit. two things that were good about this movie. One, fucking. Megatron and Optimus Prime were voiced by the original actors. So you had cool. Frank Welker mm-hmm. uh, as as Megatron, which I think is the first time that he's done that. So I'm really f- I was really fucking excited to hear his voice. So it was really cool. Uh, but oh, I didn't I didn't mention this yet. But so so here there was this fucking like montage or like this scene where where Megatron like has this meeting with the human military okay and their lawyers oh so the human military and their lawyers show up megatron shows up and he's got his sword and he's like ah and and they're like and he's like i want my crew and they're like okay and like they want him to like help them find the scepter or the staff that Mm -hmm. is the fucking MacGuffin of the movie um so so megatron's like i want my crew and i'll help you find blah 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 and they're like okay and he's like, I want so and so, and I want so and so, and I want so and so. And I can't, I don't even know their fucking names because they weren't original Transformers names. Okay. Um, but turned out like there was one dude that fucking robbed a bank as a, a, as a robot, a, a, like a like fucking a... Decepticon. Oh my god! <laughs> robbed a bank and was in jail. Oh, he was in the Italian job. He robbed a bank <laughs> oh and was god, in jail. That was the Fiat. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, he was just, the Fiat. Just stop. He was just Mini stop. Cooper. Just stop for a minute. Just stop for a minute. I want you to wrap your heads around this. He he was a Decepticon transforming robot okay. from Cybertron that robbed a fucking bank. Yeah. It's terrible. I, I get it. I right. won't spend okay. real money so, on it. So you don't even have so to so explain in, any further. Yeah. So so he's it. in so he's in jail. So 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 Megatron wants to spring him. So he does that, and then there's another one. He's a guy that's in jail that I don't know what the fuck he's in jail for, but whatever. He's like this giant fucking robot. He's got he's talking like he's like, you know, from the ghetto, but he has this giant gold rope (laughs) chain. He's got a giant gold rope chain on like run DMC. Right. (sighs) Oh, geez. Like a giant run DMC gold rope chain. And he's just like, yeah, maybe. And I'm just like, what the fuck am I watching? This is very problematic. And and there's another one that's just like super ghetto, and he's like his name is Mohawk. Like the the Decepticon's name is Mohawk, and he's a motorcycle. Oh God, okay. And he's just like all fucking like off the wall, like fucking black guy from the ghetto. And I'm just like, what the fuck am I watching? And and all that shit that I just said, right, is like so minuscule compared to the fact that Megatron is negotiating with humans for their release. <laughs> What the fuck? He can break them out. He's Megatron. Though. Exactly. Like, why would he even fucking entertain the idea of negotiating with humans? I don't know. No fucking sense. This mu- this movie made no sense. I'm sorry. If you are an adult, don't go see it. If you have a kid, bring him. The kid's going to love it. Can I just say, yeah, exactly reiterating what you just said. Lies is 10 years old and loved it, so it succeeded in some way. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know it's, what I mean? It's great for kids. Right. Um. Although I feel like I've done the child a disservice <laughs> by, <laughs> by showing him this <laughs> um, because he's loving the wrong thing. I mean, like Megatron and, and Optimus, like they've it's just sacrilege. Yeah. Sacrilege. I mean, they're they're toys. They're originally just toys. Right. But, so, when I, but our toys were so much cooler when I was a kid. I, they're just catering to like a weird market. That's what the people who religiously watch Transformer movies probably wanted. I cannot wait because I know he's out now. Mm-hmm. And I know I know I know that Hasbro is looking for a, a cohesive universe. So they want they want Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, Micronauts, Mask, all these things to kind of live in the same universe. So I think they're they're looking for they're going to start new franchises. I think we're going to see new movies and I think we're going to see reboots and we're going to see like new stuff and okay. I can't wait to see where they go with it. Hopefully it's better. I mean, fingers crossed. Time I'm will not, only tell. Time will only tell because so far Hasbro has a bad track record with movies. Their toys are amazing. Their toys are great. I still buy their toys to this day. So 
you know, Bravo, Hasbro, keep pumping out the toys. Stop pumping out the fucking movies unless you're going to do a good job with it, please. And that's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Same. All right. Well, that's it for tonight. Uh, Everybody is done. Yeah, I'm yeah. done. I'm good. What I said about sexual harassment, it's not cool, guys. Don't do it. I would not sexually harass <laughs> by a woman today. I regret the things I said, but I love y'all. Yo, that's Word. what this, this, uh, <laughs> this, this podcast is is definitely about regrets. Uh, we've, we've said many things that we don't like, uh, that I like, like ourselves for having said. So That's why know. there's this forum at the end. Exactly. So. Yeah. You know, the next episode will be different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And on that note, I do want to thank, like I said earlier, Jim Rock for coming on again. He Woo! had to kind of take off a little early. Ren, thanks for coming on again. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Later. <laughs>